Time Magazine's first ever Hero of the Planet, renowned oceanographer Sylvia Earle has released her latest book, National Geographic Ocean, A Global Odyssey. It paints a picture that saving our oceans is more urgent than ever. And thank you, your deepness, for joining us here on CB24 Breakfast. Really appreciate your time this morning. I wonder, what is it about the ocean, your love affair with it? Why did you fall in love with it? I, why doesn't everybody? I mean, it's a great question. It keeps us alive. <laughs> I, I suppose there are some people who've never seen the ocean, mm -hmm. never touched the ocean, but everybody should know that with every breath you take, every drop of water you drink, the ocean is touching you. And, it, and you touch on a really interesting point there, that some people either live in landlocked places or don't travel, haven't had the opportunity to travel and haven't even seen it. And sometimes when you haven't seen something, you haven't experienced something, you can't get it. But, but your book is going to help people get it. I hope so. This is really an opportunity to tell the story of the ocean with a lot of, of stories in between, celebrating explorers, scientists, divers, <laughs> and those who have experienced the ocean and to look over their shoulder and, and share the view. Just as, you know, we've all shared the view of Earth from space, thanks to astronauts who have been there, and they confirm the world is blue. Mm -hmm. Only instead of just looking at the surface here, you do have a chance to literally dive in. Yeah, I, I've been fortunate enough to swim in, in a lot of the oceans here, and, and it's, you know, it is remarkable. I, like you, I love the ocean too. Uh, Sylvia, we've just come out of COP26 talking about trying to, you know, limit, you know, emissions and, and temperature on the planet to one and a half degrees, you know, over the, the previous amount there, because there's a real threat to coral reefs. And if, if coral goes, the oceans are, are not far behind, right? Well, that's the coral canary mm -hmm. <laughs> in the ocean a signal, but it, it affects all life. If you want to change the nature of life on Earth, change the temperature, change the chemistry, and we are doing both, not only to the air and to the soil, to the land, but certainly to the ocean, with consequences that it's like a giant experiment. But you know, we know, we know that we have problems, but the good news is we we know what to do. We just have to get the will to to do what needs to be done to the hold the planet steady. Yeah, the solutions are there in front of us, and they've been widely discussed. I wonder, in, in your career as an oceanographer, what are the biggest changes that you've noticed, and, and how quickly or rapidly have you noticed the changes happening? Well, what we're putting into the ocean, there are no plastics at all. There's some trash, but nothing like the magnitude of what has happened since the middle of the 20th century when I first began exploring the ocean, diving as a, as a scientist. So what we're putting in has really been notable. Now the beaches are not just loaded with flotsam and jetsam that's kind of curious and interesting, but it's really disgusting. The magnitude of stuff we have put into the ocean now coming back to haunt us. And secondly, what we're taking out. I used to be kind of wary of going into the ocean because of all those big fish that were there, especially look out for the sharks. Mm -hmm. Only now I worry that there aren't any big fish and the sharks are mostly gone. Yeah, I mean, they're the apex predators keeping most of the ocean under control indeed. I wonder the other fascinating thing about the ocean, and I mean, it's vast, it's enormous. We probably only know a certain percentage of it, but there are also so many discoveries that are still being made. We're still learning so much about it as well. That's kind of an exciting side to this as well. I know there's a dark side, but there's still a very exciting side too. It, it is, we've learned more again, since the middle of the 20th century than during all preceding history combined about the ocean and about a lot of other things too, but fascinating. I tell kids, no, <laughs> the greatest era of exploration is just beginning. You certainly have a chance to be at the, at the cutting edge of learning about this planet from the inside out. Only about 15% of the ocean floor has been mapped with the same kind of accuracy we have for the moon or Mars or Jupiter, let alone the rest of this planet. And about that part in between the real ocean, between the top and the bottom, mm -hmm. huh, less than 5% has been seen by anybody. We're finding new, important insights all the time. The magnitude of our ignorance perhaps is a big discovery of our time. Yeah, that's so true. Well, we can educate ourselves if we pick up your book, Sylvia Earle, Time Magazine's first ever hero for the Earth. Great conversation. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Thank you for having me on board, Nick. Absolutely. All right, take care.